that there's no clustering. It's one of the fastest ways of spreading this uh, virus is uh, when you are too close. And um, we've been advised that we should keep a minimum of six feet distance from the next, uh, next person. And this is exactly what uh, we are trying to achieve. I tell you here to brief you on the federal government's uh, continuing efforts to combat the coronavirus and pandemic, which is ravaging the world. We ought to make this briefing a regular affair until we conquer this disease. But first, let me use this opportunity to commend all our first responders, the great team at the Federal Ministry of Health and the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, the immigration officers, the port health officers, and others at the port of entry, who I would say are in the forefront of this battle with an unseen enemy. We appreciate their sacrifice to keep us all safe. We also thank Nigerians for complying with all the preventive measures being put in place by the government. This includes social distancing, which is actually deliberately, deliberately increasing the physical space between people to avoid spreading illness. This entails staying at least six feet away from other people, as we can see, as we, can, we have demonstrated this morning. Cancellation of events likely to attract large numbers of people. Self-isolation, quarantine, suspension of services, etc. The government at the highest level is already leading by example. Mr. President, for instance, has cut down the number of courtesy visits. Mr. President is not shaking hands. One of the president's daughter, who returned recently from an overseas trip, went straight to self into self-isolation. The meeting of the heads of states of the Child Basin Commission, scheduled for next week, has been cancelled. Visitors to the State House get their hands and ties under temperature taken at several points before reaching the venue of the meetings at the State House. The federal government is aware that some, polit some political and religious leaders have either denied the existence of coronavirus or have defied the directives to avoid a large gathering. Leaders of all youth must show great responsibility at this time. They must avoid putting the lives of not just their followers, but also those of the general public in danger. Nigerians too must take responsibility. They must do what they are requested to do, to stay safe, and to stop blaming others. For those who would continue to willfully flout the directives, Aim at checking the spread of this disease. I want to assure them that the long arm of the law will catch up with them. We need the cooperation of all Nigerians in the area of contact tracing. As you may be aware, health services use contact tracing to find people who may have been exposed to an infectious disease, in this case, coronavirus. Those who have come into close contact with others who have coronavirus are at higher risk of infection and of potentially infecting others. For those who will not cooperate by submitting to the authorities as required, the government will use all lawful means at its disposal to trace and bring them in. Having now shot our gateway airports, the biggest assignment for us is contact tracing to find all those who may have come into contact with those who have the disease. It's also the first out there, a big joke, 
a disease cannot affect Africans for one reason or another, or that the young is immune to it. This is not true. Based on what we know so far, no one is immune. No one is immune to this disease. In New York, for instance, fifty-four percent of those who are infected are between the ages of eighteen and forty-nine. As the World Health Organization has warned, young people are not immune to coronavirus and must avoid socializing and communicating with older, more vulnerable people. Gentlemen, as far back as January 31st, 2020, the federal government had set up an interministerial multi sectoral preparedness and response committee to put in place an action plan for joint response in the event that the importation of disease occurs to ensure its containment. The committee started the work immediately has been responsible for the formulation of many of the containment measures so far away. And this happened even before the first in this case was reported. And on March 9th, 2020, President Mohamed Buhari set up president, a presidential task force for the control of coronavirus, especially the disease potential of causing significant disruption to health services in the country as well as impact negatively on the economy. While Nigeria has refused to succumb to panic in tackling this disease, it has not wavered in its preparedness. The government has taken a number of measures to contain the disease. They include restrictions of travel from 15 countries, each with more than 1,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19, the countries, as you know, are China, Italy, Iran, South Korea, Spain, Japan, France, Germany, United States of America, Norway, UK, Netherlands, Switzerland, Austria, Austria and Sweden. The government also suspended the issuance of visas on arrival, which was being used to the judgment of Nigerians. The government has maybe cancelled all visas issued to nationals of these countries about. The government also eventually shut down the international airports in Abuja, Lagos, Kano, and Poracot. Further, the government reduced the fuel price from 145 Naira to 125 Naira per liter. It granted a credit relief, relief of the, the, the it was credit relief of 1.1 trillion naira announced by the central bank to businesses affected by the pandemic. There's also the establishment of a credit facility by the CBA for households, small and medium enterprises. And finally, there was a reduction of interest rate for loans from 9% to 5%. These are some of the you know, uh, 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 proactive steps that have been taken by government. Perhaps one thing that is dangerous, if not more dangerous than the virus, is fake news. So, perhaps one thing that is as dangerous, if not more dangerous than the virus, is fake news and disinformation. Our efforts to tackle corona, coronavirus are not being helped by the spread of fake news. Suddenly, coronavirus pandemics are popping up everywhere, in particular on WhatsApp, prescribing chloroquine, which has not been approved for treating coronavirus, garlic, hot baths, etc., as a cure or of the disease. We implore Nigerians to shun these charlatans and follow the directives from relevant authorities. We are happy that Facebook is cooperating with us. They've asked Nigerians 
to report any false or misleading reports on Facebook and Instagram pages so they can immediately bring them down. I can report that Facebook has been bringing down flag posts in this regard. Facebook is also taking preemptive action to remove any false or harmful messages about this pandemic and public health in Nigeria 24-7. Similarly, WhatsApp is working with the Nigeria Center for Disease Control to strengthen the capacity to keep the public informed on coronavirus. We want to appeal to Nigerians to continue to support the efforts of the government at all levels to defeat this coronavirus. We are open for the best in our efforts to contain the disease, but we are prepared for the worst. The truth is that things may yet get worse than it is now. Hence the need for all hands to be on them. Tougher decisions will be made on the way to contain the disease. But whatever decision is taken will be in the best interest of the Nigerians. Before I conclude, let me inform you, gentlemen, that I came here straight from the meeting of the presidential task force on the control of coronavirus. I will now avail you of the decisions taken at that meeting. And also give some information. One, the Nigeria now has a total of 36 cases. Nigeria has recorded its first coronavirus death, a 67 year old man in Abuja with serious underlying disease. Disease is actually. It has been also decided that henceforth all passengers on domestic flights are to be properly screened just like we do for international travelers. This will include taking their temperature and also insisting that they get their hand sanitized. All federal schools are already shut down in the executive secretary of the National University Commission with a to close all universities, both public and private. Gentlemen, we are prepared to take on and defeat this disease. As the Mamad Buhari has assured Nigerians that the government is on top of the situation and that there is no cause for panic. This is not the time to engage in name calling, second guessing the government, or play politics. Coronavirus does not select its victims on the basis of their political party affiliation, their religion, their religion and ethnicity. Therefore, Nigerians must come together as one to stop coronavirus getting this track just like we did to the border. I want to end by giving you some fake news alert. An audio recording that is being circulated on the social media, especially on WhatsApp, has made some bogus claims, including that Nigeria is seeking to buy used protective gears from China, waiting for money from the World Health Organization before doing anything. That Nigeria has no funds to tackle the disease because the foreign reserves have been exhausted and funds stolen. That Nigeria is understating the figures of those infected, etc. This is the most responsible inaccurate and definitely orchestrated job by a charlatan and should be discarded by all Nigerians. It is obvious that this actual job is aimed at distracting the hard-working health officials and misinforming Nigerians in order to create panic. The federal government will not be distracted in its effort to fight the disease and keep Nigerians safe. Therefore, we urge all Nigerians to discard the senseless voting. For those seeking genuine update information on the disease, the NCDC, that is the Center for Disease Control, is updating Nigerians real time on its website and all social media platforms. 
Another message being circulated on social media claims that the federal government has agreed to pay 8,500 naira to each citizen to stay at home for one month starting from March 30th, 2020. It says Nigerians should enter their voter's card or national identity card number and other details on a certain website linked in order to access their money. It actually asks also for your BPN numbers. This is fake and it is the work of scammers who are trying to cash in on a global tragedy. Nigerians should please not fall for these scams. I wish to thank you very sincerely for your patience. Thank you very much. That, um, the leadership of the National Assembly has um, directed that all its members that have just come in from any of those countries should self-isolate for 14 days. And I, my, our appeal is that such members will heed the directive. So like I said in my presence, in my press statement, on the high of the low. So I think uh, not only will they be a danger to themselves, they will also be a danger to the community. So it's not just about senators, but all of us. Uh, I think we should heed this uh, advice that if we travel, we come back, we should maybe go to self isolation. And I can assure you that the federal government, we are ready and willing to enforce this self-isolation, whatever it will take. Um, the other question, I think you, you ask yourself, what are, what, not lockdown? Well, I, we must first understand two things. One is that this is not a disease. Indigenous to Nigeria. Every case we've had so far, at least the first few cases, are the cases that have been imported. However, if you don't succeed in contact tracing, you might end up in a situation where we start and having cluster or community spread. And that is what we are trying to avoid by contact tracing. As to whether we are going to lock down the country, I think I said it in my residence that we should be ready for tougher measures. The form is going to take would come out in about a day, either before the end of today or by tomorrow. But clearly, Nigerians should be ready for tougher measures. As to the question about religious leaders that are not taking this thing seriously, it's not only here. Uh, I think, and I hope we are going to learn from Korea. The air incident in Korea was actually as a result of what happened you know, uh, at a particular, um, you know, uh, in, in, by a particular religious sect. Now, we've had not just religious leaders, even some political leaders, uh, make, making fun of the government directly. As for the religious leaders, we can handle them because we believe that the various states that make those laws will enforce them. But I can assure you that we will not hesitate to enforce any of the laws we make. And the federal government will not shy away from you know, making declarations that it's going to enforce, even if it means you know, another is executive order. Uh, as to, I have heard also some uh, political leaders saying that uh, their states are immune. No state is made. Make no mistake about. It. Make no mistake about that. But 
the full weight of the law will be brought upon anybody that violates any of these regulations, be it at whatever level, because they're not just endangering themselves, they'll be endangering the entire uh, you know, uh, uh, public. I've answered all the questions. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. I am not, um, like I said, uh, by the end of today, I'm sure, later by tomorrow, uh, there will be certain uh, decisions that will be announced by the um, Presidential Task Force on uh, COVID-19. And uh, I won't rule out the possibility of restriction uh, in respect of uh, civil servants and other public servants. And I think already many states have done so. Lagos State has uh, asked people on level 1 to 12 to stay at home. Um, which we commend. Uh, Lagos it has also gone further by directing that um, public transport uh, vehicles cannot carry more than half their capacity. In other words, if your bus, your public uh, transport your public, the bus used for public transportation has a capacity for 16 people, you can only carry eight. If um, you have a taxi, maximum two for the driver. And we believe that uh, this is kind of thing that will help. At our meeting today, we did make a lot of recommendations, which if approved by the end of the day, will actually uh, change the uh, would actually affect all our lifestyles. But don't forget that it's because we are alive. That's why we can worship. Because we are alive, that's why we can agitate. We've had some, all kinds of opinions saying that uh, we are trampling on the fundamental human rights of citizens. No. We are protecting the lives of citizens. It's because they are alive. That's why, because that's why they have rights. We want them to continue to enjoy those rights. And uh, like the, like the, um, the slogan of the World United Nations World Tourism Organization, it says, stay home today so I can travel tomorrow. So yes, we we'll you convince people today because we want them to be alive so I can enjoy tomorrow. Thank you. Yes. Very proud of Lagos City in particular. Uh, they've closed all they've closed all nightclubs, all pubs, all external centers. And I think on Thursday, if I'm correct, there was a meeting of the National National Economic Council. And the governors were there. And the governors were given, were addressed by the Center for Disease Control and the Minister of Health. And we told them in no uncertain terms that they need to take this very drastic, draconian decisions. Because if we want to control and contain this pandemic, then we must be also be prepared to suffer some inconveniences. So our appeal to market, to state and local government is that they should please ensure that the social distance, congregation of more than 50 people is, you know, uh, uh, is uh, uh, enforced. However, the issue of market closure is being referred to the states and local government and 
they must properly plan for them. Because if you don't properly plan for some of these uh, you know, uh, steps you want to take, it might lead to unintended consequences, either in terms of security or in terms of social upheaval. So we, 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 we are not like China. In China, they were able to enforce closures of supermarkets and everywhere along the way. Because they were dropping groceries in the houses that were under lock and, lock and key. So we would do this taking into consideration our peculiar circumstances. See, you must not forget that a very huge percentage of our economy is informal. People who go out every day to make a living. If such people are not allowed to go out every day, you might have all internal consequences on your hands. So we are studying every uh, uh, um, option, but we will not rush to take decisions that will lead to another pandemic. So uh, that's why I will just stay with what I know, the decisions that we have taken at the level of the federal, decisions some states have taken, and I will bless urge you to wait till the end of the day or tomorrow morning for new directives from the federal government because we are definitely going to take tougher measures. We have recommended tougher measures and we want to lead by example as a federal government. Tracing about a thousand three hundred people. One thousand three hundred. Uh, today, it's going to be much more than that. Lagos State has succeeded in tracing a lot, hundreds of people, and we will not hesitate to use any pla all platform we have, including the military or the police to enforce social distancing and to ensure that our tracing, contact tracing is success because we are talking about uh, uh, you know, uh, a situation where if we don't take time, uh, we can have up to, we can have several, several hundred thousand people you know, infected because you see, what, what we know today is that this, if you don't do proper contact tracing, the figures will multiply every five days, which means in a month, if you have a thousand cases today, in a month it will become six thousand or even more. That, that shows you why it is important for us to to um, embark on uh, contact tracing. And again, I think Nigerians, like I keep saying, must take ownership of this uh, crisis. They must cooperate with government. And government can only do, can only go as far as the government they receive from Nigerians. Uh, a situation where you know you just come back from the US, or from the UK, or from France, or from Germany, you don't go on self-isolation. The next thing that you go into a, a pub, you go to a nightclub. You are not going to endanger your life, that of your family, but that of the entire populace. That, that's why I said, do not hesitate to use whatever platform to ensure that you do not endanger you know, the lives of other people. Uh, as to um, whether uh, the government will be ready to give subsidy 
and um, uh, yeah, well, I, 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 my, my position is that I just we should work towards containment. Let's work towards containment. Because, oh, you see, containment prevention is always cheaper than cure. And that's why all our emphasis now is on sensitization, on advocacy, on uh, appealing to people to help us. And I, I, a few people have helped. Some of the people that have actually turned up for tests, it was because their friends told them they were going to expose them. So please, if you know you have traveled recently, please go to self-isolation. If you have um, any symptoms, please dial some of the numbers. We have. Yeah, it's true that people are complaining that uh, some of the numbers they are dialing is yes, but you see when you handle 4,500 calls a day, if you divide that by number of hours, we are talking about almost 200 calls or 240 calls per hour. Uh, and per minute, that goes to about, uh, you know, every minute you are taking four calls. So it's not easy. But we have also appealed also appeal to the private sector and to other to help us so that we can even have more lines. We are also employing more people to man our lines. We are also uh, training more. So bear with us. But if we all obey these basic regulations, easy to contain. But right now, containment is the answer. Thank you. Sir? Let, let me please clarify myself. And I, I said, you will not I said we will not hesitate. If anybody is in Qatar, we will not hesitate to use the police or the military to ensure contact tracing and to ensure social distancing. I'm sure you've all seen some of the videos in the background where the policemen actually wanted to break you know, people that were 